This video is brought to you by Zavi. Simply follow the link on screen or click the link in the description of this video to head over to the Zavi website and redeem our awesome discount codes to get money off of your favourite Doctor Who TV movie and gaming merchandise. Follow the link and use the Whoaddicts 20 for 20% off all clothing merch or use the Whoaddicts 10 for 10% off anything and everything on the Zavi website. Enjoy the video. What is up guys, Matthew here, joined by Liv, and we are here today to review the New Year's special, the 2021 New Year's special, the one we've all been waiting for, Revolution of the Daleks, which saw the return of Captain Jack, we saw Dalek Civil War, we saw some awesome stuff, and I will put it at the beginning of this review, there will be spoilers before we get into it, just in case people come into this review maybe expecting it to be spoiler free there will be spoilers so click off if you are wanting to avoid them so we went into revolution of the daleks with uh, good feelings um we went into it with expect good expectations it was looking good from the outset um and i thought this had the makings of being one of the best episodes from the chris chibnall era i thought it had all the ingredients there um and it's came, it's gone, we haven't said a word on social media. And I am very, very disappointed. Um, there have been, now don't get me wrong, um, there are, there are, there are m much worse episodes in the Chibnall era than this. Um, there are much better episodes in the Chibnall era than this. And there were some very good moments. But, overall... Um, I think the pacing was an issue. It was very, very stop-start. It never picked up enough pace. It never really got going for me. And I'll find myself trying to get into it. And every time I thought something was getting going, it would stop and start. And there were loads of talking scenes. It, this episode brought me back down to earth with a bit of a bump. Um, because a lot of the old problems that we've had with the Chibnall era of Doctor Who, primarily Series 11 came back to haunt me during this episode. Um, and a lot of a lot of aspects of this story, which I think could have been done differently and been done better, this had a lot of potential. And I think it's a lot of potential unfulfilled for me. Mm -hmm. For the 75 minutes they had, the characters they had, the setup, the premise, the initial plot, it looked like it had all the ingredients. Didn't deliver for me. Oh, God. I'm disappointed. I'm not angry. I'm not frustrated. There are worse. I just... I come away from that episode feeling very flat. Like, I, I came away from that episode just thinking, oh, you know, I didn't... I was just like, oh, come on. You've literally took the words right out of my mouth. Like, I'm just... I was so looking forward to this episode. Like, all day yesterday, on this morning, I woke up and I was thinking... New Doctor Who today. Oh, I'm so excited because the trailer, the synopsis, and everything else that that was said about the episode got me so excited. But I am really, really, really disappointed. The old habits of Chibnall's writing just keep on happening, and it's so frustrating. Like, 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 you're like, and but like Matthew said, the episode wasn't the worst of his era. No. There has been far, far worse, but uh, but, uh, but to me, it's, it, it's seriously not its best. I I just felt like we went back to, to Series 11 yeah. um, a little bit. Um, and I'm just disappointed because I just think there was there's so many, so many things they could have done in this episode, so many, you know, awesome moments they mm. could have made. And it just... Uh... I just felt so flat coming out of it. And that's the biggest disappointment for me. Like, I come away from it. And I felt like while I was watching it, it kept, you know, it was getting going. I was like, right, here we go. And then it would stop. Mm. And then there would be a long, drawn-out talking scene. And then it would get going again. I was like, right, okay, good scene. Let's go. And then it would stop again. And I felt like 
it kept trying to get out of second gear and then it just kept stalling and stalling and stalling and then the end as well. I mean, we'll get into the, the nitty gritty of, of certain bits, but the overall feeling is of disappointment. And for me, it's not that it was bad. It's just that it could have been so much better. Mm. That's that's how I'm going to sum it up. It wasn't bad. There are worse, but it wasn't great either. It could have been so much better. And I, I've left this episode feeling, you know, this was a Dalek story. This was a companion mm. exit. I should be coming away from this either feeling like overawed or very sad or upset. I came away from this episode feeling so flat. Mm. And that's um, not good. But let's delve deep into um yeah. let's delve deep into the, the nitty the gritty start, yeah, of the, the episode. Start of it. Come on, then. Um so of course it follows straight on from from resolution. Yeah. Which is great because um that's you know, I want this to be like a Dalek serial yeah. thing, like separate from the rest of the series. So I, I'm glad that they took on straight from resolution. Um so and... I actually liked it in well how it started. Um was it Leo? Mm. That and um that got killed by the so angry tea lady, <laughs> shall we call it an angry tea lady? No, Leo might have been the dude who um oh, who the cloned the Dalek. Yeah, 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 it was the driver who was killed by yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. But um I, I I liked his exit and um like um the Dalek was in like the back of the van. Yeah. That that was really good. Yeah, I like the start of it, um, how they recovered it, and obviously Jack Robertson, that little evil, conniving son of a um he obviously picks up the the, the Daleks um casing its shell and, and wants to turn it into his favourite thing, money. And he does that by taming up with a British politician. I thought that was a really cool um a, a cool start into getting the Daleks into the factories and, and in, you know, building up to what we got later. I thought it was a good start. Um, and, um, um, throughout this episode was Jack Robertson. Yes. Um, it was played by Chris Noff. Noff. He was exactly like he was in Arachnids in the UK. He, he is such a brilliant, brilliant actor. Yeah, I really liked him in this. Oh, I really enjoyed him. Yeah. Typical money yeah, grabbing, yeah. greedy, cowardly businessman. You couldn't trust him as far no, as you could throw him. Not. Um he, he didn't have a clue what he was getting into. Um and you know, after Arachnids I felt like his character had a lot left to give. Yeah. Um and I, I liked him in this and I don't want to skip to the ending too much, but I, I found it ironic in a cool way that after all that he'd done he actually ended up looking like a hero at the end. Like that's, yeah, yeah. You know, that's yeah. that's just for me. Like that, that's that's kind of cool in a way. That's like a cool ending to his character. That you know, despite being an absolute you know greedy money grabbing whatever you want to call him, he, he he actually came out of it quite well. He did, yeah, he did. Um, but I I, I love his character. and I think Chris Knopf's an absolutely. Oh, he is. He is fantastic character. Sensational. Um, character. So obviously the the they, they build drones as they're called. No Dalek. Mutants anywhere to be seen, but we discover Leo, silly boy, he has cloned and has grown the tiniest little fragments of the Dalek DNA that he found and has basically been building, growing mutants. Yes. In what looked like a really cool and scary factory. I mean, that it was did, yeah, it did. gruesome mm, stuff. And I, I love seeing the Dalek mutant stuff. Um, that's what I really liked about Resolution, and in a way, I wish we'd saw a bit more of it in this. Yeah. Because in the in the factory, when it jumped on Jack's face and was on the back of Yaz, I thought they looked really, really cool. Well, that was one of the positives from um, well, from well, a Resolution to me, like um, that Dalek mutant was like full on controlling her, gruesome stuff, and and for everything. But, but in this, so we um. So all we saw was like um, a snippet of that. Yeah, we did. I mean, I like the idea though that they were growing them. And, you know, the, you had the suits yeah. being built by Jack Robertson, and then the mutants were getting secretly, you know, yeah, thingied yeah. elsewhere. And that was a good and easy way for Chibnall to get the mutants there. The Daleks are built, and we can get them into the suits. Yeah, like yeah, it was a really quick and easy mm. way for them to basically get a Dalek reconnaissance army ready for the episode because that could have been something that could have took so I'm, I'm glad with how they did that um typical of you know a, a, a scientist yeah carelessly you know growing all these mutants and whatever so i thought that was a really really cool start to the story bringing the daleks into it the reconnaissance daleks 
Um, so that side of it with Jack Robertson was, was awesome. Now, I thought this as soon as it happened. Um, and this was a... You know, at first when it happened, I sort of thought, oh, why have they done that? But I'll roll with it and see how it goes. In hindsight, this was a bad, bad decision for me. They shouldn't have done this. And I don't know why they did it, because this, this is another point of unfulfilled potential of what they could have done. As great as it was to see Jack and the Doctor reunited like yeah. that, yeah. I am so disappointed that the premise, the plot, the build-up, the teasing of this entire episode was the Doctor's in prison. You know, they met. It was. It was, it was in the trailer. The the companions are going to be without her. They're going to be fighting. Mm. You know, of course they're going to need the Doctor eventually. She was always going to rock up, but not after ten minutes. That it was such wasted potential. First of all, the scenes in the prison were bloody great. We saw a weeping angel. Oh, I love that. Yeah, the silent. The silent. We got a silent. The silent. Even the pating. I was sort of like, it's a pating, you know. No, no, no. Um, no. An ood and a sycorax. Yeah. And you know the scenes in the um, prison when we got like a very morbid down doctor. I thought, I, I thought I like this. Yeah, I hope I we're gonna get half an hour of this, yeah, yeah. That, you know, I want to see the Doctor be pushed to her limits and then when the Earth needs her at the very end, she escapes. But she was out like that. And I thought... The one, oh. part, the one part of that um, prison scene, and well, uh, I actually liked, but in um, and, um, um, she was also thinking I wouldn't. So when it was time for bedtime for her, um, she rolled over, like, talking to herself, right... Right, Doctor. Night, Doctor. Story mm. time, Doctor. And, and well, um, so anything before, if in, like, in series 12 or 11, she did that, so I would have been completely gone. But, but actually, that was really good, how, and, um, because how it's shown that she was obviously missing them, but, uh, but at the same time, so completely losing her mind. Exactly. Exactly. The potential of this was yeah. bloody massive. And it was teased so much. All we saw of the Doctor was her in prison. We could have had more of her prison life. We could have seen her struggling. She's surrounded by creatures she's fought so much. And it could have honestly built up so well that, you know, Jack's on Earth with the companions. They're trying their damnedest to fight off these Daleks. They can't do it. And at the very end, when you think all hope is lost, she turns up, she saves the day. I'd have been so happy to yeah, see her. Yeah, I'd have been, been like, yes, the Doctor's here. Mm. She can turn up, kick the Daleks' backside, save the day, get rid of them. And it would have been awesome. You know, the whole build with her being in prison up until that point where she finally escapes. They could have played on that so oh, much. They, could have, done, they yeah. could have built on it, developed it, and really, really took it to town. But she was out of prison within five minutes, and it didn't bother her. She rocked mm. up on Earth and was like, I was in space jail. And I was like, what wasted potential. I was, from that moment on, I thought, they've missed a trick. They've yeah. missed a massive trick with her. I mean, the, the cliffhanger for series 12 was that she's in prison. Yeah, yeah. Within five minutes, she's out. I thought, what a missed opportunity. Well, them scenes with, um, so with her and Jack, so reunited for the first time, were great. Oh, great, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they were, um, the 13 said to Jack, are oh, you, um, so have you had work done, Jack? Great <laughs> reference. Yeah, that, 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 that was ap absolutely brilliant, that. And them scenes were good. When it happened that they were going to be escaping, I thought, yeah, I'm disappointed, but let's roll with it. Let, um, let's see how it goes. And as soon as she landed, or and or or said to Jack, right, it's um now it um no where it's time to go um to see the fam, and she landed, and she just started being her annoying self, that that has irritated me throughout series eleven and throughout series twelve. I honestly felt like hitting my head off a brick wall. Well, that for me is Chibnall learning nothing. The premise of this episode, she looks so good. I, I was goddamn excited. And and everybody knows who watches this channel regularly, I can't get on board with her. But, yeah, but before this, I was so excited. The prison stuff, how she looked. 
the bedtime story bit. I was like, yes, this has been what I've wanted. And then she lands down her silly, annoying self. It's like, oh, shit, Paul. It was, unfortunately for me... Oh, like, <sighs> yeah. like 50, 10 minutes in, and she's already in the episode, and we were like, well, what, what's the point in that? And then, and well, and then well, after that happened, I was like, right, fair enough, it's happened, let's get back into it. I think that point is, it just, it just had such a, her getting broke out of prison, I agree, the, the scenes with Jack breaking her out were awesome, and I loved seeing them two yeah, back together again. Any worries about their chemistry, they were fantastic oh, yeah. together. They, they were. Um, Jack and 13 were absolutely awesome, and we'll get more onto Jack in a bit. But, her being broke out of prison, that soon was the start of quite a few issues for me. Because one, the potential of the prison itself and her being there yeah, was gone. wasted completely. Two, it had no effect on her whatsoever. No, no, completely. You know, didn't from like, what no. we saw on the, no. you know, I was hoping <laughs> that no. maybe the prison, you know, maybe it was like a time lock prison where there's no idea of time. Maybe she was in there for centuries and it could have really took its toll on her and she comes out a different person and she gradually has to you know, recover herself and maybe she's a bit shaky with the companions at first and she eventually comes round to being herself again. But she rocked up and as soon as she said, I was in space jail, I thought, you know, <laughs> here, here we, they've ruined it, here yeah, we go. Yeah. And apart from a few moments where she stood up to the Dalek, um, a few moments where, you know, she had a few cool lines... Oh, I didn't enjoy her in this. No, I didn't. I, 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 like, again, it's the same old issues all I, the time. I enjoyed... See, I, and I, I, I enjoyed her more in Series 12 than I think I did in this. Yeah. And that's disappointing well, for me, because I feel like she took a big step forward for me in Series 12. And there was, you know, the scene with Ryan when she was talking about herself. I thought, this is good. Um, she had some really good moments, but her character hasn't been really changed that much by the no, time as child, it. hasn't been changed no. by the prison. And I thought this was a great opportunity for a character. I don't want a doctor to change completely because she's just not. I'm completely, I'm over the fact that her doctor, this is who she is, whether I like it or not, yeah. this is who she is. I've got to get over that. But no different. She was, you know, long, rambling, talking scenes, funny jokes that didn't land, annoying lines. One example... Yeah. I'll go to the very end again. They had that moment. We'll get to the ending when they're, the four of them hugged. Could have been a great moment. Yeah. And she goes, my fam. And I thought, that that's a prime example of her it's just ruining just moments with line. these silly lines, silly dialogue, silly expressions that just take me out of moments. Like, I've always admitted and always said, like, I'm never going to get on board with her. And that's fair enough. We, um, um, so everybody in this fandom, so as doctors, that are enough for them. And, and, Aaron, um, for me, it's Geordie. But coming into this episode, I was thinking, please, Chibno, just give me something towards her. Because, like what you said, in series 12, she was okay. The moments between her and Sasha's master were brilliant, mm. absolutely brilliant. But in this, just like you said, her character felt like it went back to exactly what it did in series 11. The silliness just keeps popping in. The rambling, the talking of the plot constantly. Telling us what happened. Right, and... Um, it's right before, so we even see it happening. Like, how many times is Chibnall gonna do this it's so frustrating it's like when she got out the TARDIS and she was like you know she walks up to Jack Robinson who is, she was like you can call your security but I've already put you know and it was like, was like oh. a bit childish and I just oh. I was begging for a, a bit more seriousness yeah. from her at times yeah. and unfortunately it's just a big missed opportunity for me like oh. I just thought that you know I'm over the fact that this is how a doctor acts yeah I'm I am now I'm I over the now. fact I'm, that I'm, done with it. I'm over the fact done. that she's all, she's she's silly and you know she has these words that she uses like my fam and this and I, I'm just not gonna like her particularly um but I, I the, I'm more disappointed that they could have really played on the prison stuff and also bringing the doctor in that early just 
it put the companions on a back foot. It yeah. even put Jack at a back foot because, again, in that first 10 minutes before she was rescued, I love the scenes with the companions in the TARDIS. So especially Yaz, at, mm. at the beginning, so inside that TARDIS, she had all these post-it notes. And I was thinking, yes, this is what I've been wanting. Ev everybody can tell them companions love the Doctor. Like and um, like you can tell. There's a great friendship between the four of them. They, they, like, like, well, there is like an absolute great friendship. They all miss her. You can see that. Um, they all want her back. But I would have preferred to see more of them trying to save the day. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. that scene, because that scene at the beginning, so with them three, um, um, and um, so confronting Jack Robertson was great. Yeah. Like, like, like. Like, and well, they totally failed, but, they yeah, were but trying. it was funny. And they were trying, yeah. And it was funny, and they walked away and said, yeah, the, yeah, <laughs> not the best one. And and all I was wanting was, and well, it was for them to go and to go again, keep, keep trying. But as soon as, as soon as she walked up, I was thinking, God. I'm going to say that what, what, what took this episode in the wrong direction was the Doctor being in it as much as she was. Yeah. And... I say that because I love the stuff with the companions trying on their own. I did, yeah. Because what them three companions needed, because we've had it throughout series 11, series 12, the four of them have been glued together all the time. Yeah. They've been glued together, you know, for all every single episode throughout. This was the opportunity, especially Ryan and Graham, it's the final episode. Yeah. Let them have the first half, the first 45 minutes on their own, trying their best, getting somewhere but ultimately failing to the point where the doctor needs to be there. Yeah, yeah. She didn't mm. need to be there no, after 15 didn't. minutes. She didn't. It, the, the, it was not like the stakes were raised to a point where the, the earth was on the brink or they were cornered and ready to be exterminated. There was no like build up or tension to her uh, arriving. It was just they were sat at a table talking. She rocks up. And then as soon as as soon as she rocked up, the companion's usefulness was out the window because yeah. then they just became stood behind her, like in the scene in Osaka, in the factory, in the TARDIS, when they were talking and doing their plans, they reverted back to being what they have been and what's been affecting them badly throughout series 11 and 12. They just became... Spare parts. Stood in the background. Completely spare uh, Even parts. Jack, who we'll get on to, had so many scenes in this where he was just stood around behind the Doctor as she rambled on for five minutes. And that's the big disappointment for me. Why was she in it as early as she was? Because it took the episode in a direction which, ah, yeah. oh, there was so much potential for the companions, for Jack and for the Doctor herself to rock up, be absolutely awesome at the end. But because she was in it for as long as she was, she grated on me. Yeah. And that's the big disappointing thing for me. I said this last night on our live stream. Um, so when you asked the question, uh, she worries about going into this episode... Um, the first thing that popped up to my mind, the busyness of it all, Jack being back, Jack Robertson, the Daleks, um, the prison. So I was thinking everything like that, too much to do, too many people, some people are and um, ge generally going to be left out. And it was, Jack was completely, oh. Well, let's talk about, let's talk because what happened... Obviously, they, they were split. Yeah. So at least they were split in two groups. Yeah. So the the, the uh, Ryan and um, Graham went with the Doctor. Yaz and Jack went off to the factory. I absolutely love Yaz and Jack together. Oh, that scene. Them two together. That, that scene. That was some oh. of my favourite parts of the episode with them two together. They were fantastic, weren't they? Well, that scene, like, like, um, like, um, at that point. There was Yaz, like, still upset with the Doctor, but mm. Jack made such a good point. When you're with her, feel lucky that you're with her. Yeah. Because when you're not, you'll know about it. And, and the Rose mention was just, oh. Got me a bit, that. that. Like, Looking like, all right, got oh, me a bit. Like, that was some lovely scenes. And, like, and, like, and, like, and so everyone at Friends and, um, can think of that, like, if that if it's so true when you've got it it's brilliant yeah. but when you haven't that 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 and that was so good like them scenes oh and then and well 
I mean, even after um them lovely scenes on um, the Daleks jumping on like um the mutants jumping on him, I was thinking, oh my god, Jack, Jack, yes, and I was, I was like, oh, best, this best, is brilliant. The best Come part, on. The best part of the episode it for was, me, yeah, um, completely, because it felt like they were truly in danger. Yeah, it never felt. There weren't too many moments in this episode where I felt like they were really in danger. Yeah. You know, they, were, they always felt like they were sort of at arm's length from the Daleks. There was never a moment where I was on the edge of my seat going... Well, there, were, there was only an, one other moment which was on the Dalek ship. Um, but there weren't too many moments where I was like, oh my God, you know, they could die here. They never felt like they were in true danger apart What's from that? on the ship and in that factor. Because when the mutant jumped on Jack, jumped yeah. on Yaz, I was like, oh my God, they're in trouble. That was the best part of the episode for me with them two. They well, were awesome. The danger aspect and and um, they were not being and they were not being like involved in enough threat and danger, and um, has has consistently run through Chibnall's era through series eleven. There was not one bit of danger, nothing. Mm, series yeah, yeah. twelve, there were some bits, but not enough. And then this happened. And then and and then all I was thinking is like you're not you're not learning anything. Mm. Every every aspect of series eleven and series twelve, he's doing the same. The rambling lines, the, um, the like um too many people, lack of threat, like 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 for goodness sake, it, it it's a Dalek episode. Two friggin' Daleks are in this. Lack of threat again. Well, until the end. Um, but. The best part was when they were split up because that was the time when the characters had their own moments to do their own thing. Yeah. Um, and again, the same issue when there was too many of them just standing about. There's just not much going on. And when the Doctor reunited with them in the factory, it then just reverted back to, right, Jack, yes, get behind everyone else. Yeah, yeah. We're back to where we were. Um... I would have liked yeah, to have but... seen them separate because Jack and Yaz together were just phenomenal. I'd like to have seen more of that. But... Um, Let's, let's just run through them individually then because um, let's talk about Jack because obviously it was a huge deal that he was back yeah. in this. And I will say every single scene he was in, I loved. Oh, yeah, it, Seeing it was Captain Jack fantastic. back was, was absolutely awesome. But they could have done more with him. Like They could have done more. Like, again, I've been left disappointed and that is a fact. Like that. Like I keep saying a hundred times over, too big of a TARDIS team. All my worries I had have come true. Get again. Yeah, that was the that was when like I say, when they were split up, it was good. When they were back together as a four, they just became sort of irrelevant. Like in the, um so even the companions out the three of them. Yaz had more to do, like in series 12. Graham, bless him, was hardly in it. He hardly said a freaking lie in in, uh, in most of the scenes. And it was like, it's like, oh, so disappointing, because I love Graham. I absolutely love him. But again, he's hardly in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I completely understand <laughs> where you're going, it, where you're coming like, from. It, so frustrating like he, he, he keeps doing it keeps over and over again doing it well two of them have gone now so yes but, but one's coming yeah in. yeah Let, we'll yeah. get we'll get to that so <laughs> individuals then yaz very good yeah yaz um very yaz good for me was um and well, uh, and well, like Chris Knopf, a standout. I, I think out of the ones that are sticking around, I'm glad she is now. I, I am, actually. Because I, I think am. there's still more for Yaz to do. And I, I loved when she was pouring her heart out to the Doctor. She yeah. really does care about yeah, her. she does. They, they got a bit close to the Thasman thing, but I, I'm still still I'm still I'm okay with it. Mm. It's a friendship thing. They missed yeah. the Doctor. That's all good. I, th I liked how Ryan was even giving her the cold shoulder. I thought that was quite... He was a bit more stubborn about it. And they had a nice moment in the TARDIS, which... So his acting for me is still very hit and miss. It is. Yeah, it's still, but... The but, moment was good, though. But then that scene together was good. Uh, and Well, I admit it was good, but but that but that part of the episode, the pace just dramatically dropped off it again. Like, 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 and well, it started, halted, started, halted. 
But that was one of the scenes that it did that. Yeah, that's another thing that we've had within, within Chibnall too. I mean, there's a time and a place for these lovely scenes and when done right, they can give the episode a chance to breathe and they can... You know, yeah, really yeah, help the episode. Just keep coming around in full circles. They, they, when they happen, and when they're done right, they, they do give the episode a chance to breathe and to calm yeah. down and then to get going again. But there was a lot of times in this episode when they would stop and there would be talking scenes, yeah. which would go on for too long and you'd, you'd, you'd lose was you a one bit. One of them scenes that, and because that for me was just going on too long. It did a bit, but I, I liked it because I think it was a nice character because that was one of the few times in this episode where 13 was a little bit more reflective and calm mm. and serious yeah. before she'd run off babbling on or yeah, whatever. Like, yeah. And for Ryan as well, you know, he doesn't get many scenes at no, all yeah. like that. So I was happy to see that. What I will say, and we, we can't talk about the companions without touching upon the, the, the ending. So let's just get Jack out of the way before we go into them. Um, I love Jack being in it. And I thought his chemistry with 13 was great. I do think they could have done more with him. I do. And I do. I really do think they could have I done more. I hope they've left the door open for him to come back because we didn't even get to see him say goodbye. Yeah, it's like... He I, vanished. That scene for me was just like... I was, I was thinking, what, what? He's just gone. Great reference to Gwen. Oh, I love that line. That, that, please, that, please bring Torchwood back, that's please. Chibnall's planting the scene for Torchwood <laughs> please there. Please bring Torchwood back. It's please. gotta, it's gotta happen now. But it's gotta happen now. Didn't she? Didn't he mention so about Gwen having a son as well? So she had another kid. Well, no, but I just play. But that's gotta plant the seed for a series like, of Torchwood. Come on, Chibnall. But with Captain Jack, he he was ah uh, ah uh, like he always is. The best character to ever come out. When he was saying, the, the others are like me, but I'm special. Yeah, that, that was just lines like that. But again, I wanted to have more to do. I'm surprised they never had him exterminated in this. I know, I was. Even Jack, an immortal man. He wasn't even he put under got, threat, was he? Nothing's like, like, get put under threat. I couldn't pick up. Oh, Christ. I literally feel like going up to him and saying, what are you doing? Please do this, do this, do this. mistake you're doing constantly and constantly throughout this episode here i was just thinking my god my god will you learn chibnall please it, it, oh great it's so frustrating well moving on from that we mentioned about jack um uh, the only other moment apart from when they were in that factory when i felt like they might be in danger was on the the bronze dalek ship like i said yeah and as soon as they split up and jack you know it was there for the it taking. As soon it as Jack, there. as soon as Ryan and Graham said, can we go with Jack? And they went. And even Yaz had this look on her face as in like, mm. Yaz had this worrying look as to say they shouldn't have done that. Yeah. And I thought they've set it up perfectly. You know, the doctors gave them permission. Yaz clearly is not happy with mm. them going. They've gone on a ship with Jack. He's immortal, so he'll be fine. But them two might be in with, in with a bit of a problem. I thought this is the moment where one of them, yeah. if not both of them, get exterminated, get cornered. And for the first time in the episode, I was there was true, honest, intense, you know, in, an intensity yeah, yeah. there of me thinking, oh, oh, someone's going to happen here. But it didn't. And that's another, another, where I just thought they could have just killed off one of them, if not put them under danger. But that was the moment for me. You know, they could have went on the ship. The doctors gave them permission. How she would have regretted it if only one of them had come back with yeah. Jack. You know, Jack but has to come... Them scenes after with Jack and the doctor would have been fantastic. Imagine they it come back. Been fantastic. Jack, you know, they escape the ship with Jack Robertson, but Ryan's not there. Yeah. And the oh. doctor's like, where's Ryan? And like Jack Ryan's has, and there, Jack has yeah. to be like, I'm sorry. Yeah. And the doctor could have been furious with Jack. She could have got upset. Yaz could have got upset. And there could have been a real moment where she could have went, I trusted you with the companions. You've let me down. One of them's been killed by a Dalek. That ending. But, oh, they went on the ship. They found out. They, they basically just rescued Jack Robertson. Yeah. They escaped <laughs> and blew up the ship. And Yay. it was like, you know, it made the Daleks look at, you know, the bronze Daleks look a bit useless. Yeah. And it was just once yeah. again... They're not under threat. They pop back on the ship. Everybody again. lives. And again, not for the first time in this episode, they could have done something there which could have really been something else. But they didn't. Because even in them scenes, Jack and them got separated. They went in different directions. 
why couldn't a Dalek have went up the corridor and and like, exterminated one of them? Or like, at why? least, or at least started to chase them. Like, exactly, like there was just none of that. Or Jack gets exterminated and they're on their own for a bit. They could have done it. They could have done so many things that could have put them under pressure. But it's all too easy, and that's the problem it with is, the. Ch it's all, it's too, all too just easy. too easy. So we've 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 re we've we've talked a lot about <laughs> the companions. We'll get yes. on to the end, the Daleks. So we have, of course, the Daleks. As I said earlier, love the build up to how the suits mm -hmm. were were built, the mutants, how they were grew. They got into the suits, and we had. A little bit of a Dalek civil war. I just wish yeah. it could have lasted a little bit longer. Even the, even the idea of the Doctor sending a distress signal to the Daleks, tricking them to getting on planet Earth, to because let's be honest, the Daleks are exactly that. I can't knock Chimnall for his writing of the Daleks. They are creatures who are they only yeah they're only yeah, happy with, with that. and the Doctor said it purity. That's exactly what the Daleks are. Bang on. If they see another Dalek that's even remotely not not pure, they'll kill it. Yeah. So I love the idea of them facing off with the reconnaissance Daleks, or whatever you want to call them, and basically saying, you're not pure, we're going to kill you. Yeah. And I thought, awesome. But again, there wasn't... And maybe, <laughs> again! May, maybe, <laughs> again. It should, maybe it should have been a two-parter. I thought there could have been... Because the shots that we saw in the trailer of them firing in Sheffield... That was all we got in the episode. Yeah, that... It was just the yeah, same two shots. Just, yeah. We didn't see any more of the Daleks threatening to take over the Earth. No. We, there was a few scenes of them, you know, shooting a couple of people in an airport here, there, Tower London, great. But again, they could have done more with the Daleks taking over the planet. We could have had so much more of the Daleks fighting each other. But yeah, it was I'm over. It was that. all over very, very quickly. But... Uh, and again, another th another thing that happened that could have been done better that left me again thinking, oh, I'm disappointed. This is one of Chibnall's habits, so, like, again, with too much going on, people are going to let get left out. The Daleks in this were sometimes left out. They, like... Uh, I thought, I, I'll say this, I think Resolution is a better Dalek story uh, than I Revolution. Do. Uh, I, I do, because in that episode there was more threat. There was more for One me. Dalek in Revolution it, did more for me. And this is this this isn't uh, this this isn't something new. We've seen no. it happen a lot in modern oh, era, yeah, but, yeah. Um I'd have loved to have Probably seen with the Dalek, I'd, yeah. I'd love to have seen more of a um more of a battle between them. Oh, even on the even on the bronze Dalek ship. Yeah. The reconnaissance Dalek, I think, from last from Resolution, yeah. I'm sure it was. Because yeah. it said I'm a even if it was or maybe it was just the last one, they killed it like that. And it was like, you know, phase one. Let them fight each other, yeah. kill each other. Oh, that took five minutes. Yeah. Phase two, by the way, loved the idea of how she tricked them. I did, yeah. That, yeah, was, that, that was clever. Good. That was good. Because when I, them... I, 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 do, I do admit that. When that them Daleks flew... And it, I kind of got it because, you know, all the Daleks off the... I, it, it was slightly stupid that all the Daleks fell for it. Yeah, yeah. And that every single Dalek willingly flew into the TARDIS. That was a bit like, well, you know, the Daleks. It made them look a bit stupid. But, but, they had to get rid of them all. That was clever so what she did there. That I, was clever. I love how she used two TARDISes yeah, to trick that, them. That was clever. Even though when she rocked up on the hologram and was a little bit stupid oh, again. Oh, um, God, them scenes just dropped me straight back down to worse. Now it's in complete. Even then, it's... though, even then, that's just the thing, the Doctor. Yeah, though. it is, it is. The idea of how she tricked them was very oh, it, clever. It, it, it was very good. She like, sent them back into the void. Yeah. They know all about the void. Yeah. And just the TARDIS crumpling up. That was that was good. Yeah, that, that was good. That was good. So I think the best way to sum the Daleks is what they were. What Chibnall was trying to do with them was absolutely fine. There just wasn't enough time for no, him to do it. No, definitely. But I think that's like, the best way of summing up the Daleks in this. Like I said, too much going on. What Chibnall has to do is strip it back. This could have been a great two-parter, I think. They could have spent a lot more building the Daleks up to them, being in their suits, yes. and then part two could have been the Civil War, yeah. the, the Earth being really under threat. So maybe the Daleks in this were actually, you know, the idea of the Civil War and them fighting each other yeah. and the, getting a bronze lot of Daleks to get on. That was all good. There just wasn't... I think he just ran out of time. Yeah. I think yeah. that's safe to say. Yeah, I, I, he, he I, I, ran out yeah. of time, which is a shame. But that's 
you know, that's what happens when you have only one episode to do as much as he did. So, the Daleks as a whole, decent. They, they had a bit of killing. They were, yeah. they were sort of hindered by the, 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 the episode length. We then get to the conclusion to the oh. whole thing. And this oh. is what left me feeling the most disappointed. So, we've mentioned Jack vanished like that. Maybe yeah. they did film a goodbye scene. They didn't have time for it. He vanished... Great cameo with Gwen. Like, great mention yeah, of Gwen. Yeah, I love that. Um, Gwen. That was awesome. I hope it sets up a, a return for Jack yeah. and maybe even Gwen as well. But talking of unfulfilled potential in this episode, yes, the Doctor being in it for a lot longer and escaping prison after five minutes was unfulfilled potential. Yes. Yes, there were times when they weren't as under threat as they could have been when maybe, you know, they could have been captured or something. It was unfulfilled potential. But the biggest disappointment for me, and I've said this, the subs are not going to be surprised to hear this. Out of all the outcomes that could have possibly, you know, been for Ryan and Graham, out of all the possible exits, this for me was at the bottom of what I wanted. Yeah. They could have had, I don't know, one of them gets injured. One of them is so scared and gets so traumatised that they have to walk away. Or one of them dies. That was, you know, that was at the top of my list because I thought that could have drawn so much emotion. But them both just basically deciding to just leave. For what? Ryan basically foreshadowed that he was leaving it within the first couple of scenes. Yeah. So that was predictable. Yeah. So when Ryan basically rocked up at the end and went, I'm not coming, I thought, well, I knew that I saw that one <laughs> yeah, coming yeah, I did. from a mile off. And then I thought, well, that's predictable, but Graham, is there going to be more? And then Graham just went, oh, well, I'll go with him then. And I was just like, oh, there was so much potential again. Even if it's not killing them off, even if it's not that, they could have just done it in such a... Oh, it's the Shit. flattest companion departure of oh, the modern ever, era. Ever. I and I there's people on Twitter saying that they were in tears and that were born. How no, 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 no. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. If they want to if they have that connection with them characters, that's fine. But for me, I have never in their entire era, I've never Graham, yes, I did. You know, it's sad to see Graham go, but I have never felt connected enough to Ryan or to Graham really to see them just walk away and feel anything. Mm. And that's the sad... Yeah, people, if they're going to look great. But for me, it's the flattest companion departure we've had because I was sat there thinking, well, I felt absolutely nothing. And even when they were about to hug, and I thought, that's a nice moment, okay. She then goes, my fam, and I go, you ruined it again! <laughs> like, what? There's so much it potential! so oh. predictable. Like, I'm so disappointed by their exit. It's the flattest that they've had in the modern era. I'm so disappointed. They could have done so much more. It's like Chibnall just didn't have the balls to kill one of them off. He doesn't. Or, His you know, writing is so boring. I've said it. It's boring. But the, He could have just been bolder I, with, the, with the exit a little I bit. I felt like a complete idiot after watching this. I do. I do. I feel like a complete, complete idiot because I felt... From every lie that come out of his mouth, he said it is going to be heartwarming and emotional. That for me did not pull on my heartstrings. They walked away. How? 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 How can you get emotional at a character just walking away that has hardly impacted the? Oh, oh. That was the biggest. That was the biggest letdown for me because I thought oh. at least, you know, at least at the end we might get something really emotional. But we didn't. And there wasn't even a cliffhanger either. Oh. And when she said, fam, I thought that I, I, I'm, 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 I'm done. <laughs> it killed done. any emotion that there might have been. And for me, there wasn't any. No, I'll be honest. When, when Graham was getting a bit upset and walked away, I thought, you know, I'm sad to see you go, Graham. But Ryan, I couldn't oh, have given no. the monkeys. No. I couldn't have given the monkeys. Like, oh, why? I really... I really wanted to feel something at them going, but I just can't. There's nothing about the era that, that's keeping me. It isn't. It, it's so utter predictable. Chibnall has told us a complete load of tosh. 
I think what it was was we we were expecting, you know, for something bold and big and spectacular. And for me, it was, you know, I mean, you look back at the other companion departures, the more similar one to this was Martha. But her character was built up around getting over Mm -hmm. the Doctor and leaving and basically saying, you know, you've underestimated me, I'm leaving. And that was great. But Rose had a tremendous ending with getting sucked into Donna had to forget him. Amy and Rory, oh. that was awful. And Clara in Face I the Raven. I never stopped crying at Amy's about And even, even, even bloody Clara. I do not like Clara as a companion, but I cried. And that, that was bloody emotional, but that was Bill not... and Nardole, Nardole oh. left to protect a city. Bill... Even Bill. Bill was I converted into and... a Cyberman. But they, they just... I, 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 they just walked, oh, and there was n- oh. there was no real. I mean, Ryan's only motive was that his mates needed him. Well, well, why? Yeah. Um, and Graham's was just well, I want to go with him, and it, it was a very flat ending. And I was, oh. I was, I, I feel like an idiot as well because I made my I, prediction. I, do feel like I made my prediction video in the hope that we'd get some really emotional, impactful, bold stuff, and it just. This episode wasn't brave enough. Yeah. And on top of that, so, Ryan and Graham have gone. Yeah. Their exit is a very underwhelming one. Yeah. But we have finally, you know, what we've yeah. mentioned, we've mentioned, you know, that one of the issues, we've had an ongoing issue, too many people in the TARDIS, it has such a, it has such an effect sometimes. So finally, and I said this in my prediction video as well. I said it in my Thasmin video. Finally, the Doctor and Yaz together on their own. This is, you know, the Doctor can have a chance to shine a smaller TARDIS team. It's a good, refreshing change. And was this cliffhanger them introducing a new companion? Because, John, yeah, he listen, John Bishop is a great comedian. I, you know, I like the guy. But, again, I just thought, you've got rid of two companions. A great opportunity for 13 and Yaz. But then we're getting a third. Yes, and I was just like, what? why? Why? Just leave I can... it as 13 and Yaz. Please. I can see us having the same issues that, I, we've, I can't make it that we've had oh. already. Oh. My biggest, the biggest thing for me, taken away from this, is I, I was hoping for so many things going into series thirteen. I was hoping for a change in the Doctor, not completely. I was hoping that we'd get a change in the Doctor, some development. Mm-hmm. She's still going to be the same, but the prison, a time in prison, could have changed her. Losing a companion might have changed her. In series thirteen, her and Yaz together could have changed her. We could have seen her and Yaz affected by the death of one of their compa- their friends. Mm. But what's changed? Nothing. We're going into series 13 without a cliffhanger. We're going what in- a surprise! We're, we're going into series 13 and I feel like the characters are the same. They are the same. Nothing the, apart these from... These characters have not been on a journey. They haven't. They have not been on a journey. They haven't. The only thing... The, the only thing that's gripping me about Chibnall's Who is the timeless child. And I'll, I will come out and say this now, if it wasn't for the time, because that's the only thing that I'm gripping onto that might keep things going and might keep something, you know, something attached to the Doctor's character that can keep me invested, something attached to the TARDIS team where I can go, oh, well, how's the timeless child going to affect her? You know, she, she doesn't know who she is. As much as I don't like the timeless child idea, it it's keeping me gripped to the Doctor and, and this ongoing arc. If it wasn't for what happened at the end of series 12, I honestly, I go back to how I felt at the end of series 11 mm-hmm. with how there wasn't really much, um, you know, much change in the characters, much, much anything that was changing or keeping me hooked or gripped. If it weren't for the timeless child, I don't know what would keep me watching Doctor Who, other than the fact that it's Doctor Who and we have a channel and it's my favourite show. Other than that, if it wasn't for the timeless child, I think that's what's keeping me going at this moment in time because without that, the characters aren't really changing. There's nothing that's happened to them that's really changed them at all. Only the timeless child has changed the Doctor slightly. Mm. Slightly. Other than that, I just came away from this thinking, well, what's changed? Mm. 
Where's the cliffhanger? Where's, where's that thing to keep me going? I was left feeling exactly like I was at the end of the Battle of Rands Kurav Kolos. Flat, underwhelmed. Luckily, Resolution was there to pick me back up, but now... <sighs> Damn. Uh, th th this is what's worrying me. Like, I've admitted the whole of this year is not going to be for me, but I've come out of this episode thinking, I can't do this anymore. I can't. The, the fan of the show is slowly getting stripped away from me. Mm -hmm. Because of this era, I, I, I'm honestly being serious. The only thing that is keeping me fan of the show is the old stuff and and Erin Classic Hill. Because, uh, be, yeah, because well, yeah, because well, if it wasn't for that, I, 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 I'd be gone. I would be completely gone because I can't get on board. I just can't because the biggest thing is is he's doing. The same stuff over and over and over again. We were talking about it last night on the live streams. The biggest fault of his is a lack of threat. We're in a, we're in a Dalek episode and there wasn't enough threat. The lack of threat, the lack of... Too many characters. It's like the Doctor being irritating and... It's like, oh, oh. My worry is that we're going into series 13 with a lot of the same issues that have that I was hoping would not be, you know, not eradicated, but, you know, I was hoping that after what happened at the end of the Timeless Children, after her maybe being in prison for a long time, she even said herself she had so much time to think. Yeah. You know, we've seen Doctors over time, like we saw the 11th Doctor change, we saw the 12th Doctor develop, even though he became a bit too soft in Series 10, he developed further into a much more well-rounded yeah, Doctor. Um, we saw the 10th Doctor develop into the Time Lord Victorious, we saw the ninth Doctor develop from someone who was very harsh at the beginning to becoming a bit softer. Even, you know, the seventh Doctor, we saw him get very dark towards the end of his era. I just feel like there's not enough character development with 13 and I'm, I was she's hoping... She's staying the same, constantly. Like, like she, she isn't doing anything. What I was clinging on to was that things wouldn't change entirely, but they would develop into something better and something different. Mm. 13 would develop into something different. We'd get just them to in the TARDIS, which would be a different dynamic. We might, you know, we might have more of a threat, but in this episode, we still had the same old. The, the threat wasn't quite there. Yes, if it was a two-parter, we had more Dalek action. There would have been more room for it. But again, the fact that the companions, Ryan and Graham, left in no real danger, under no real threat, that was so flat and typical of what we've had. We're going into series 13 with a Doctor that seems very much the same. And we're going to have a TARDIS team of three, which is not what I think it needs. No. I just... Oh, I don't see light at the end of the tunnel. I no, see I more of the same. And the I only don't. thing that's keeping me hooked is the timeless, ch the timeless child thing. And that's not even an idea I'm, I particularly like either. Like, like, so I'm like, just... Oh, I'm so like, disappointed and flat. Because, because, because slowly, slowly, slowly my love of Doctor Who... Is literally going. It is. It's going. I just thought it, it, it's completely going. The, there was so much potential for Chibnall to do so many bold, big nothing, things nothing, like nothing, in this episode. Nothing's happening. His writing is always the same, and I was so looking forward to him to come on board after Moffat. I was thinking, yes, but oh, bring me back, bloody Moffat. Be, be, because at least I was bloody entertained. I'm not entertained. Let's wrap this up. Oh, yeah, we Let's better. Wrap this up. We better. Um, so, summing up my thoughts on Revolution of the Daleks, I thought there were great moments in there. The first 15 minutes were great, but like I said, the introduction of the Doctor um, had a lot of negative impacts on the episode, as in it basically it, it went completely against the premise that I was looking forward to and I was hoping to see. Um, it did damage to the companions because I thought they could have done so much more on their own. It could have really developed them as characters. The Doctor coming in at the end to save the day would have been an awesome moment, but she was in it for the whole thing. She was silly, apart from a few moments. She was the same old Doctor and reminded me of some of the, the things I don't like about a character. Jack was good. Um, 
The Daleks were good, but again, they could have done more with the Civil War stuff. Um, Jack Robertson was a great character. I really liked him, but I was especially disappointed by the ending. Um, you know, them just walking away, it, you know, the whole him on his bike thing and seeing Grace, I didn't care by that point because I just thought that they, they, they just could have done so much more with this and that's the way I'm going to end it. So I'm going to give the episode a six um, out of ten and I'm just going to conclude by saying it's left me feeling very flat and I think it was just unfulfilled potential of what could have been um and here's hoping series 13 is 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 good because um it needs to be well for my, my conclusion it's very disappointing i'm left feeling very flat and thinking why why am i wasting my time watching something i'm not enjoying and that is worrying. And I'm giving it a five. Yeah. Like it, it's like it's so frustrating for us because we, we, like, we love the show. We do, but 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 we can't lie to you guys. So one say that um that um so we're enjoying this either because we're not. The fan in me is slowly starting to just completely go. It is, it is fully losing me. I am feeling exactly the same like I did after series eleven, thinking, "What's the point? I, I, I'm done." Are you feeling obliged to watch it? I am. Mm. I am. Before this, I wasn't because I, I was looking forward to it. But after this, if in but I, I'm going to be honest. If it wasn't for this channel, so I would not be watching series thirteen. I wouldn't. I I I'd be done. Well. So I would be done. So right until a new head writer took over. Um, yeah. Like I said, there's been worse. Um, there was good stuff in it, but there's. There has been worse. I have. There's, there has been a for me, lot worse, it's but... just there's so much more they could have done with it, and it's left me feeling so disappointed. But we we will wrap it up there. Yeah. Um, because this has been one of our longest reviews. <laughs> um, so, you know, we'll make the most of it. It's an episode that, you know, we've waited a long time for. We won't be getting any more new Doctor Who for I don't know how long now. So that's been our review. Our, as always, as you know, with us, um, honest, heart on the sleeve, um, telling you how, exactly how we feel, no sugar coating it, uh, review. So we hope you've enjoyed it. We hope you've stuck with it. Uh, I know it's a long review, so thank you very much for, for joining us. Um, if you've enjoyed this review, hit the like button, of course. Subscribe to the channel for much more Doctor Who content to come. We will do a lot more content of the fallout from this episode. Hit the bell so you don't miss a video. Do comment in the section below your thoughts. Please be kind in the comments as well. Everyone has their own opinion. Um, so respect others as we respect yours. And you can stay updated on everything we're going to be doing on the channel from here on in uh, via our social media and our website. And you can even donate to us for some cool perks on the Patreon but um, yeah, like I say, we'll be bringing uh, lots more content to come regarding this and other stuff. So do subscribe for that. Um, and that's been our review of Revolution of the Daleks. Okay, but very, very disappointing. Not left us feeling too great. Um, but until next time, thanks for listening and watching and we will see you in the next one.